My name is Tan and I have a dream. I want to fly a cinema camera through a gigantic grass field. And the way I'm gonna do that is I need a cine lifter. And I want to do it my way with the budget. <laughs> so what started out as a cheap build eventually got ramped up to a higher price. This natural progression happens when you read more the product reviews as well as getting consultation from other pilots. You want to strike a balance between how much you're willing to spend as well as how much you can put your faith in the components in your quad. Which is the first tip I like to share with you guys is to just read up a little bit more about this whole CineLifter thing. FPV CineLifters on Facebook is my go-to library where I read the current CineLifter owners, professionals and hobbyists alike. Expressing their opinions, I can use a search function to find any of the components that I'm looking for and it's definitely a place I recommend for newcomers to go to if they want to start on reading. And the second tip I can give to you is to talk to some FPV friends, um, especially if they're an FPV expert. I was lucky enough to have a conversation with Lao from Drone for Speed and he was the one that gave me like really in-depth advice. Because these guys, they deal with all these electronics and parts on a daily basis. They know how far you can push certain electronics. So next comes the build. I'll be going step by step on how I put this whole thing together, running through the electronics and the rough wiring that I did with them. And after that, I'll just run through the settings that I changed in INF. Feel free to ask any questions if you have it down in the comments below. If not, let's get to assembling this quad. So we start out with the bottom plate with the lipo strap holes. The forearms sit on these holes and meet the middle plate on top. You put your screws through this and these screws would go through everything having some space at the bottom to meet the 3D printed legs. Eight standoffs on. I actually do have a full build tutorial step by step if you wanna follow it, I'll link it here. So I started to build with the X flying AF310 motors through the top and the bottom of the end of the arms. I sleeved them up with braided sleeve for the motor wires. They would actually go down between the bottom and the middle plate and they would pop up through the center back hole to meet the ESCs. Now these are the Foxio Reaper 65 amp ESCs. And for my build, I put the four bottom motors wired to the lower ESC, while the top four motors would be wired to the upper ESC. For the positive terminal, I put a 12 gauge wire, which is a thicker one facing the back, while an 18 gauge wire facing to the side a little bit. Same gauge wires for the negative biasing towards the same side. Both ESC's larger wire would meet a 10 gauge wire which splits to another set of 12 gauge wires to streamline to two XT90s. I wanted to leave it open for me to be connecting two smaller LiPos in parallel in the future. But if your build intends to use only one battery and you're very sure of that, you can have both ESC's 12 gauge wire meet a 10 gauge wire and straight away connect it to an XT90. So now that the power is sorted, let's go to the low ESR capacitors and spike absorbers. I have a 3D printed part for the thick called the platypus, and it accepts two Rubicon 2200 microfarad 50 volt capacitors. And the legs of these capacitors goes through the spike absorbers, which are the Rush PFB light. And the paranoid me kind of just heat shrink and wire tape this up. And once I'm satisfied with that, I tested it with a 6S rated smoke stopper. And it all seems fine for now. And now I go into the connectivity between these two ESCs and the flight controller. The Matek H743 is my selection for the flight controller. It has a capacity to accept 8 motors for sure and more. But there is only one GST that accepts motors 1 to 4. The signal pad for 5, 6, 7, 8 and above are only solder points. And if you want something that's a bit more plug and play with GSTs, you could definitely look at the, the Matek F722 HD, which has 8 motors on GST. But while we're working with the Matek H743, for the top ESC, I wired the GSTSH sleeve to match 
all of the pads. This is VCC ground telemetry current motors 1, 2, 3, and 4. While for the bottom ESC, I've directly soldered on to VCC ground motor signal 5, 6, 7, 8. But I opted to also wire up VCC and ground for redundancy reasons. For example, if one ESC were to fail, the other one can hard carry the whole rig home. And of course, while wiring this, test it with a smoke stopper to make sure you got all 5 beeps. Next component is the TBS Crossfire Diversity. Diversity basically means that you have two immortal T's, meaning that you would have a better chance of getting good signal throughout your flight. And it's definitely more expensive, but I'll pay for that safety. And for it, you also just wire it similar to a normal TBS Crossfire Nano. The Crossfire is ground to the ground pad on flight controller. The 5V on the Crossfire to the 5V pad. Channel 1 TX on the Crossfire to the RX pad of your flight controller. Channel 2 RX on the Crossfire to your TX pad on your flight controller. Following up is the video transmission. And if you've opted for the DJI full-size air unit, remember that it only accepts 7 volts minimum to 17.6 volts maximum. A 6S directly connected to the full-size DJI air unit would basically blow it up. And I went for the Maytag 9V back. And the full wiring for the full-size DJI air unit goes as so. The 7.4V to 17.6V of the DJI air unit goes into the 9V out of the back. The ground of the DJI air unit goes to the ground of the back. While the RX pad of the DJI Air unit would go to the TX on the flight controller, the TX on the DJI Air unit goes onto the RX of the flight controller. And next, I opted for a buzzer with a built-in battery. This is the JHE42B. It follows one rule, that is when the LiPo is disconnected from the circuit, it will count to 10 and then begin beeping, powered by its inbuilt battery. This of course is the fail safe to find your quad if it gets disconnected from the lipo and lost in the middle of a bush. But when you commit to this, it is also a promise that every time the quad lands and you unplug the lipo, you need to hold this button for 2 seconds to stop the beeping procedure. Its wiring is as simple as 5 volt, ground, and buzzer minus. And finally, we wire up the GPS and I've opted for the Axis Flying M80Q GPS. RX of the GPS goes to the TX pad of the flight controller. The TX of the GPS goes to the RX of the flight controller. 5V pad of the GPS goes to the 5V pad of the flight controller. Ground of the GPS goes to the ground of the flight controller. SDA of the GPS go to the DA data of the flight controller while the SCL of the GPS goes to the CL of the flight controller. So at this point, you should have all the components on your quadcopter. You should definitely check all your leads for shorts before you attempt a first plug-in. Now, I would like to recommend the smoke stopper for this point, but mine was actually giving me a false short reading. I think just judging based off so much crap that's happening on this build, it, it was kind of freaking out. I gathered the courage and plugged it in. And now we'll just do a quick rundown on the programming I did. I've chosen INAF for my Cinelifter because I wanted GPS position hole. If you do not intend to have the GPS hole position um, feature in your quad, you could totally go for beta flight or even emu flight. As I know emu flight has some presets of cine lifters there as well. Uh, the things to look out for is this whole pre-arming checks thing. It is basically like all of these has to be ticked before you're able to arm. And for now, since I only have USB plugin, navigation is safe is X. When you come in, you could straight away um, calibrate the accelerometer, clicking every time you move position. So you click once, and then you just leave it like that, and you lift it 
up this way at a level plane, click another time to the side. Just follow the images and the direction of the quadcopter. As for compass calibration, I don't recommend to do it at the moment until you go out for your maiden. Just stick around the video for later because before I do my maiden flight, I will show you how to do the compass calibration on site. So in INAV, you want to make your mixer preset the Octo X8 and uh, load the mixer on, save reboot. Then you will have all your motors existing. And next you go to the outputs tab, which you need to click enable motor and servo output before you can do anything. Uh, the reason why I'm on DSHOT 150 is because when I'm on 300 or 600, one or two motors wouldn't spin on that protocol. So changing it to DSHOT 150 um, solves my problem. So I'll just leave it at that. Motor idle power, I just switched it to 5.0. So at least um, when I'm playing with the motor test, I just need to be on 5% for the motor to start moving. Next, we move on to the ports tab. Uh, based on where you're wiring your things, just enable the UARTs. And for INAV, just note that you don't have to enable MSP on where your DJI FPV VTX is. Um, that would be over here by the peripherals tab. Because, um, yeah, initially I did, I enabled MSP and didn't do anything. My OSD wasn't connected to flight controller. But once I turned off my MSP and changed it to DJI FPV VTX, it solved the problem. So wherever your GPS is located, for me it is UR number 2, I enabled GPS there. I moved it down to 57600 for good luck. Whichever UR your RX is connected to, enable RX. And for the H743, the GST pins basically connects the UR number 8 for ESC output slash telemetry. So I've changed it as per. Next we go into configuration. Um, the accelerometer and the barometer normally auto syncs, but if you just wanted to double confirm, just check your flight controller specs. While for the magnetometer, you would actually check the spec sheet of your GPS. All these leave as none. Don't need to touch the L2C speed. I enabled GPS navigation and telemetry and telemetry output. I left everything else as per. My current meter, I set it to ESC because my ESC has telemetry. As for fail safe, I put return to home. I did not touch any settings here in particular. And this is my PIDs. This is only conclusive after a quick tuning session. I've basically ramped up my PIDs much higher than my 5 inch builds because every time I landed, my motors was cool, so I just kept upping by 5, then upping by 10, and eventually I came to this. It flies my A6300 pretty well, so I will leave it that as per and mess with that later. I don't know what all this advanced tuning is, so I'll leave it alone. Programming, I don't know either. And as for your receiver, if you're on serial and you're running crossfire like me, just change it from SBUS to CRSF, meaning crossfire, save and reboot. For modes, yes, program, program it as you would. Arming, angle mode, horizon mode. This is the money on why I chose INAF, position hole. Return to home is cool too, but everyone else has those too. There's turtle, mo there's turtle mode, of course. And beeper. There's nothing in adjustments tab. And as for your GPS, uh, refer to your GPS manual on what protocol that is running. OSD, I'll leave it to you to adjust how you would like it. There's a neat thing you can do here, which is to hide the unsupported elements, which basically just hides the things that DJI, the DJI Air unit doesn't support. So when you click that, you can see there's lesser features, so you can choose your options better. LED, if you have LEDs, go ahead, go crazy. And that's gonna do it for the INF setup. And of course, don't forget to make sure all your motors are spinning in the right direction. Um, you can just program that on BL Heli Suite 32. Connect your rig to the thing and adjust motors one to eight. 
And if you need somewhere to refer to in the direction, head over to the mixer tab in INAF. Um, motors 1, 2, 3 and 4 are spinning in the same direction as props in for your 5 inches. While 5, 6, 7 and 8, which is the bottom 4 motors, are spinning in the opposite direction of the motor above it. And that is also affected in the way you attach your props. Motors 1, 2, 3, 4, since I'm configuring it props in, they should spin as so. From a top-down perspective, you should be able to read the prop specs as well as the prop company name. And this is... And this top propeller is basically facing this way when the motor spins clockwise. While for the bottom motors, even from a top-down perspective, you should be able to read the um, prop specs as well as the prop company name. While this instead is spinning counterclockwise, so it should be in the opposite orientation. The bottom prop should be this way instead. So on and so forth. And with that, do a quick hover test and then it's out for the maiden. Basically, there's a stick command to kind of calibrate your to cali calibrate your compass. So the stick command is left stick up and to the right and the right stick down. Which is basically spinning around in circles on a different axis. Different axis. All right, let's go. Uh, it's quite a takeoff. That's one heavy boy. Min Min hover is a little bit below 50, 50%, 50 which is not too bad. Am I feeling the agility? Oh, this, this heaviness, this tune. Just nice, it's not too bad. Chase after the sunset. What a beautiful sight, honestly. Fantastic sky. It's taking the scenery, it's wonderful. I have plenty of um, throttle enough to do a dive. So let's try just that. It does take a while to gain inertia after a dive. So let's try, okay? Sixty meter dive. I really gotta gauge it much better. <laughs> this thing's giving me the shakes. Okay, it's time to take it back. Three point six, three point seven average cell voltage. Four minutes, thirty seconds ish. So that was a fun endeavor. And as for the dream, I guess um, it won't be covered in this video. I managed to fly my DSLR through a grassy field in the sunset and it's a beautiful sight, I think. Hopefully the footage comes out nice. Anyway, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching.